episode 3. In this episode we'll demonstrate how to use input mapping override to enable alternative key bindings temporarily as needed. In our example we're going to implement a placement mode where you can place a character. During this mode we do not want to be able to accidentally use other keys, only a specific subset that's required for the placement mode. And then once we place the character we want to return to the normal key inputs. There's quite a lot of scenarios where this could be useful. Any type of mode the player enters, such as entering a vehicle, enabling, enabling a power-up, equipping a different weapon with a different feature. Uh, when you open a menu and you don't want the game to, keys to be working in the background, rather than have logic to check the input's availability or the blocking of the input, we can simply add or remove the entire input ability as needed, eliminating tons of bool checking and whatever else from your code. I'm going to be spending a lot of time to implement the actual placement mode, but I think it's a really good demonstration of an override, so bear with me. You may find it useful for other stuff anyway. We're going to start in the input folder. Uh, we'll create some new actions that we need, and the first thing we're going to do is create a default folder for all our mappings that we've got here, and we're going to move all these into that folder. And we'll create another folder, I'll call this placement. And here we'll create two IAs. We'll do IA place and IA place cancel. And they can just be bulls, that's fine. Uh, we're going to add a default one. Um, normally you'd have this on like a UI or something that you, you know, you're going to interface with to be able to place a character, but we're just going to make a input for this. So I'm just going to call it a uh, test placement and it will need to be on the default config so we can press it to enable placement mode basically. And we'll go to our context and we'll create a new context here. So let's, let's add the uh, test placement here first didn't work. Did there we go. And I'm just going to set this to uh, B. And I'm going to add a trigger to this called pressed because I only want it to trigger once. I don't want to spam going into placement mode. I'll just put this to something low. Now we'll create our second input mapping context. And we're going to call this IMC. Placement, and then here we'll add our two IAs for uh, place and place cancel, and they'll just be left and right mouse buttons. And we don't need to change anything else in there. So let's start on some C++. We'll go over to the your preferred er editor, and uh, we'll start off in our data asset here. And we'll we'll add another section. So we'll add, uh, we'll add placement here. Uh, we also need to add an IA here for test placement for the placement mapping context. Context. We we need the mapping context reference. We need a priority reference. And we need our two IAs. And I've set the category to placement, so it'll come up separated. Now we don't need to add any uh, additional Binding templates, that's all good what we've got there because I'll just be basic trigger only events. Just going to jump back to the editor. We want to create a new C++ class. Well, I guess we could have done it in the editor, but we'll do it in here. So I want to create a basically a placement class that will be the, like a, just an actor that holds the static mesh rather than uh, an actual character or whatever, you, whatever you're going to place. You, you can use this to display a preview of it and that's where you can you know do outlines or something different so i'm just going to create an actor class i'll call it placement preview click in the editor we'll open up that new class if it's not open already and we want to add a property for um, basically a reference to whatever we're going to spawn so in my case it's going to be the uh, top down character that I've been using. Uh, and we're going to need a static mesh. So I'm going to add a private section here with the scene component and a static mesh. And 
think managed to so I can get access to the transformed rotate the static mesh in the blueprint. Uh, and we'll go to the constructor now. Just create those components. So the scene components, the root component, and the static mesh is attached to the uh, root component. We also want to. This will, this will depend on your game. You definitely don't want it to re replicate. So if it is multiplayer, you'll only see this thing client side. And if you don't set active collision disabled, if it if whatever you're using has a collider or whatever, it'll it'll bowl stuff over and do all sorts of crazy stuff. So just be aware of that. And that's all we need in that. We can actually just we will create a blueprint class in the editor later for that. So now we can go to our player pawn. So we need to add our key bindings. Gonna add uh, just uh, some titles here. So we'll call this uh, default. Just to break it up, you might start getting a lot of these. So good to keep it separated. So we're gonna add our two placement place and place cancel. We also need to add our additional default input for our test placement. Um, might copy this. We'll add a new placement section down the bottom here. So first I'll add that input and I'll add the two placement inputs underneath. Implement those. Add it in line again. So for our test placement, we just want to check that our we've got a reference to our player controller, and then we're going to call a function which we haven't made yet, but the, uh, we're going to call a function called set placement preview, and this is what you'd have in your um, your UI function or whatever that pass in like the uh, the preview actor that's you want to place or whatever if it's an option in the menu or something like that. Uh, for the placement, we just want to do the same. Thing for both these, check we've got a reference to our player controller, and then we're just going to check that we've got a placement mode enabled, and we and then we'll just call uh, place and place cancel on the player controller. So that's all the implementation we need on the player pawn. Everything else is going to be done through the player controller. So we'll do the same thing. We'll put in a placement little section. And we're going to need those functions that we referenced in there, in the in the player pawn. Uh, we'll need a property for the placement mode being enabled. And we'll also want uh, a server-side implementation for place. Since this, if it if you are doing multiplier, the servers has the authority, so it's the one that will spawn any actors into the world, and replication will handle it coming to the clients. We're going to need a reference to our preview actor once we spawn it, and we're going to need a and we're going to need a a reference to the actual class to spawn for the preview actor, not the actual character that's going to spawn. We'll just implement set placement preview at the moment because this is where it all starts. So we want to check that we have a preview actor class and then we're not already in placement mode. So now we need to sp spawn our placement preview. We're going to set up some spawn parameters. I'm going to swap this from terrain. This line trace at the moment is using a custom channel to just get the terrain. I actually want to make a new one of these that just uses the visibility channel. So I'll do get uh, position on surface change this channel to visibility we use that one there instead yeah that's all straightforward just always spawn not worried about collisions at the moment so now we'll just we'll spawn the placement preview into our property that we set up, the placement preview actor, and we'll add the reference to that. 
So that's how did they include so whatever you called the class. So if that's now valid, we want to set the input mode to placement and we want to enable placement mode. So let's set up the input placement. So here's our input default. So let's duplicate that. Call it input placement. So the, you've got a couple of options here. You can see here I'm adding in, so I'm checking that, that I've got a reference to the player actions. I'm checking that the, the mapping context for placement's valid. And then I'm just, depending on whether we're enabling or disabling, I'm uh, adding or removing the mapping. Um, what I'm also doing here is when I'm adding the mapping, I'm removing the default input. So in this case, whenever you enable placement mode, you won't be able to do anything else until you finish placement or cancel placement. The other option is to use the priority only. So if I took I took these out, I'll still be able to move around and do other keys inside the uh, placement mode. But because this this mapping has a placement of one, which is higher than this one, and the two inputs in this are using left and right mouse button, only these two left and right mouse button inputs will work. So it overrides the lower priority. So uh, for example. Uh, left mouse button in this uh, default input is to select a character, whereas when this when they're both active, placement will override and only the left mouse button to place character will work. So it depends what you want, whether you want to disable the rest of it altogether or just override a few certain things. Um, the other thing to factor in is to like so we enter placement mode. If we are disabling the default input mode, then we can't move, we can't zoom. You, you might want to be able to do that to place the character where you want it. So you might be, a, you might have to, you, it just means in this context, you can, you can add in those other IAs exactly the same as what they are in the, in the default input. You can add in, um, you know, move or, or zoom. say you add in move and zoom, then you can move around and zoom in and out to place your character. You've got a few options there of how you want to implement it. That's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> All right. So that's that implemented. Uh, let's let's implement place. We just want to ensure that we're in placement mode. The placement preview actor is is actually valid. If it's not, don't do placement. So this will only implement when we click place. When we get to here and we uh, press the left mouse button and say place, it's going to flick over to this. And this is so we want to place and then turn off placement mode. So the placement mode's disabled. We set input placement to off, which will in, then in turn, if you have the setup that I have, it'll turn back on default input. And then we go to the server for the authority of spawning of an actor. So let's implement that next. Because we're on the server now and we, we haven't replicated our preview actor, um, you could replicate it, but um, it's safer just to pass it over. We just want to cast that to our type, our placement preview, so we can Get access to parameters. I'm going to set up the spawn parameters in here. I'm adding an extra height to this because I found it was spawning in the floor, so it just flicks it up into onto the terrain. You may or may not have to do this with your character if you're not using the same. And then we just want to spawn our character using those params. I'm using the if if you're using a, multiple units in this, you just want to set this to actor. So spawn an actor and then. You can cast it to something else if you want to, but I'm, I know what I'm spawning. I'm only spawning one thing, so I'm just going to use straight up the top-down character. And we're getting that, so we're getting that class to spawn from our, if you remember on our preview, we had the actor class that we want to spawn. So if you're using a UI, you'd, you'd set this when you uh, spawn the, uh, the placement preview. And when the, when the player actually clicks to spawn, it will know what class to use. So the server's finished uh, spawning. And now we want to clean up. We're going to call in placement, and that'll be back on the. We'll have to send this back to the client because we don't have the server won't have references to the local preview and all that. But we'll do that. So we need another function, and that'll just be detected in placement, and it'll be client. So it's going to send it to the client. And all we want to do there is destroy our preview actor. We don't need him anymore because there's a real one spawned. And the last thing we need to implement is cancel.
actually not the last thing, but last thing for placement. <laughs> but the uh, we d again, we just want to check everything's still valid. So this will be if you if you press the set placement preview, but you don't actually want to spawn what you got, so you're going to right click to cancel. So we're going to return our input mode and disable input uh, placement mode, and then we just want to call that um that cleanup function we just made to destroy the actor, the preview actor. It won't matter that that's set the client because it's been called from the client. There is one more function we need to do. So when, when we when we spawn our uh, placement actor, yeah, we're telling it where to spawn, but then it's just going to stay in the same place. So we want it to update and move around with the mouse. So we're going to need a an update function. It's going to run on tick. So make it const. And what we want to do in here is just ensure that we're in placement mode. Oh, sorry, the placement actor is valid because we're going to be setting its position. And then we'll, uh, we'll use that function again, the on surface, just to move it around. So we just need to add that to tick now. Does this have a tick? I don't think it does. So in here, we just want to check that we're in placement mode because we don't want to do anything if we're not. And the actor is valid. Call update placement each tick. Uh, we'll just we'll add this to the constructor as well, just to make sure it starts as false. Now we should be able to go back to the editor. Back in the editor, the first thing we'll do is we'll create our blueprint class for our preview placement. Uh, let's put in contents. Now we need a static mesh. You can use anything, but um, I think I'll just make a. Grab a static mesh on my actual character here. And here it is. Let's make static mesh. So we should be able to set that now. There's Queen, and then just need to rotate in negative 90. And then. Um, we need to set that uh, reference to that blueprint on our player controller. So preview actor, here it is. And actually back in here, we need to set the placeable class, which is our, we're going to use our top down character. So that's the character that's going to spawn. And the last thing we need to do the whole point of the exercise is to add our key bindings to our data. So we've got references. So test placement. Our mapping placement. Set the priority to 1. Place and cancel place. So now if we press P, we get our character and I can't I'm trying to use WASD at the moment and nothing's happening and if I left click places a character and now I should be able to move yep now if I press P again and place another character and if I press right mouse cancels and I can move again there we go overrides in action so that's been uh, input mapping overrides for episode three in the next episode we'll be doing some more technically more overrides but we're going to do it with some modifier keys and show how we can set up shift and other modifiers using the input context all videos are linked in the description if they've been released otherwise they're all available on the rogue entity patreon now thanks for watching